Hey everybody, welcome to the July Garden Tour Part 2. Earlier on in July, I promised you another garden tour before the end of the month, so here we are. A lot has grown in the garden since then, and I have not been keeping up with the maintenance very well. It looks like an absolute jungle back here. The mosquitoes and the green heads are swarming like crazy, and I just doused myself in bug spray, so hopefully we can get through this without getting bit too many times. Having some issues with my tomatoes, I'm eager to show you, so maybe you can help me diagnose the problem and hopefully even fix it. So without further ado, why don't we start the tour? Let's go. All right, first things first, let's talk about these tomatoes. And don't mind the paddle boards hanging out here. So this is my main tomato bed, and as you can see, I've got some starting to ripen. But this plant, which is a, um, I think it's a Costuloto Genovese, if I'm saying that right, it's almost dead. I mean, look at it. We have some ripe tomatoes, but something has just completely attacked it and caused it to die. Um, I do have some blight, as you can see, which is being controlled. I'm not all that worried about it. You can see these yellow leaves back here. But there's another problem happening. And I'll show you here on this plant, this is a, an heirloom called Aunt Ruby's German Green. It's one of my favorite varieties that I plant every year. And it was growing beautifully. It was lush and tall, and you can see it started to form great fruit. And now rapidly, the leaves are just dying and stems, and it's having a hard time holding itself up. And I don't know why. Um, they're not turning yellow first. You're not seeing the blight like here on this plant. You can see the blight or leaf spot or whatever that is where it's turning yellow, concentric rings. That's not happening here. This is something totally different. There are some bumps on the stem, if you can see that. And these leaves are just shriveling up and dying and it's happening pretty quickly. And I'm starting to notice it happening to other plants. So this one is okay. This is a yellow brandy wine. This one's doing really well. This is a Kellogg's breakfast. No, I'm not really seeing a whole lot of fruit on it so far. And this is actually a sucker from a Cherokee purple that I had pulled off and planted um, in another spot. Back here, this is a, a Paul Robeson. It's doing not great. Um, yeah, so I'll take you around here. Back here, these are my healthier tomato plants. Okay, this is a beef master. This is a big pink and white stripe. You can see they can no longer support themselves. And then let me show you over here. This is another green variety. Um, I believe this is an evergreen. And you can see it was huge, big, lush, beautiful tomato plant. But the same thing is starting to happen to these lower leaves. They're just starting to die off. Look at that. See that? What is happening here, you guys? I'm totally stumped. You can see all of these dead leaves in there. And it's just making its way slowly up. You can see here, these leaves are just wilted and dying. You can see the ground. The ground is wet. We had a huge rainstorm all, all day yesterday and all last night. So it, they're not dried out. They're not lacking water. I don't know what's going on. I do still think I'll get plenty of fruit. There's a lot of tomatoes in here, if you can see, like a lot of tomatoes. So I'm hoping it'll hold on. I'm gonna give it some more fertilizer. But seriously, if anybody knows what's happening to my tomatoes, I would love an answer. Now over here in a completely different part of the garden, you can see that bed is over there and this is over here. This was a green zebra. If you reference my earlier July garden tour, you'll see that this particular plant was huge. It was lush, it was healthy, it was beautiful, and it has just been rapidly dying. Can't hold itself up. The leaves are dying. It looks like we have some kind of blossom and rot happening there. And this plant next to it was doing wonderful, and now it's starting to show the same. Ooh, that was a frog. It. This frog scared me. Um, it's starting to show the same signs. So it's having trouble holding itself up. The leaves and branches and everything have become really weak. Now there's a butterfly on it. Look at that, it's beautiful. The leaves and branches are just super weak. It's having a hard time holding itself up. It's shriveling. I just, I don't know what's happening. 
see the leaves and branches are all just starting to die. Please, if you know what's happening with my tomatoes, let me know. You know, some people have mentioned the heat. Um, it's hot here. It's probably about 85 degrees today, but it's not, it's not so hot that these would just be getting, you know, burnt to death. It's, it's something else happening. Okay, on to happier things. <laughs> my nasturtiums are looking great. They need to be weeded, like everything you're gonna see in this garden. Basil's doing well. I've been picking tons of all of this. I've been adding nasturtiums to, to salads and using them in my food photography, which has really been awesome. Um, all of these basils, Thai basil, lemon basil, purple basil, um, they're doing well. They're not growing super big, but that's fine. I've been getting enough. Cucumbers are just kicking butt back here. I'm harvesting just oodles of them. I don't even know what to do with them all. Oh, check that out. We've got some back here ready to go. Let's see, great little cuke. Thought I saw another one. They hide, you know. Definitely have some powdery mildew setting in, but that's kind of par for the course. Time, herbs, herbs have just exploded. Look at this pineapple sage, you guys. This is crazy big. I've never had it grow this big before, ever. It's just out of control. I really need to cut that down. Lemon verbena looking great. Should cut that down and make some iced tea with it. Tons of oregano, love those flowers. Sad tomatoes. Over here we've got that rhubarb. I'm really anxious to cut some of these stalks down. I mean, look how big they've gotten. Somebody let me know if I can cut these down at the end of the season or not, if it's gonna affect the plant and how it produces next year. Sunflowers are finally starting to open up. This one is facing the wrong way. Should be facing this way, let's see. But it's still beautiful. This one's not far behind. Still getting plenty of chamomile flowers. Green beans are all about done. Um, I guess, actually, that's not true. We still have some. Um, but I've kind of forgotten about them, so I'll use those for seeds next year. Kale, kale's do, still doing well. Shard is looking really nice. I've been harvesting this and cooking it up. This kale's gone to seed. Tons of arugula. This is really just a mess back here. These onion flowers, I'll be collecting those and trying to plant next year garlic. I have harvested most of the garlic. I left a few in because I'm curious to see how much bigger the cloves actually will get. So you saw what I pulled up in early July. Let's pull another one up right now. Ooh. Not bad. It's actually, I think, bigger. So I'm going to leave these guys in until they're like totally dead up top. You can still see a little bit of green but pretty happy with my garlic harvest so far this year. Now down here, we've just got a jungle of arugula and lettuces that have all gone to seed and there's some kale mix in there. And this whole bed, this whole area, um, I need to take on in the next couple weeks because I'd really like to get a fall garden planted in here and get some new radishes and maybe, maybe even beets and spinach and greens and things like that. So that's on my to-do list clear out all of these peas and all of these weeds. It just, I swear it happens overnight. Back here we have the tomatillos. Look how big this plant got, it's huge. These are gonna be just your traditional green tomatillos and it looks like we are gonna be making a lot of salsa verde this year. And then back here, I don't know why this has stayed so small. Um, in years past, this plant has gotten huge. And these are the pineapple tomatillos or ground cherries as they're sometimes called and they're super small and they fall on the ground, which is why they're called ground cherries. Let's see, they have little papery husks and you pull them back to, re whoops, to reveal the fruit. And it tastes like cotton candy, seriously. Just like cotton candy, they're awesome. See? Mmm, so good. And check out my peppers. Chili peppers are just crushing it. Which 
one is this. This is, oh, this is a Fresno chili. So these shouldn't be too spicy, they'll turn red. This is a Haloro, which is a kind of a jalapeno. Really pretty. They'll turn like neon orange. This is an early jalapeno. It's huge, I mean just covered in peppers. Um, same with the Serrano. What's this one? Or no, that's the orange jalapeno. This is an early jalapeno. Serrano chilies, I mean look at all the peppers on this plant. There's tons of them. These are the aji dulce. These are great because they have the flavor that's sort of fruity like a habanero, but they don't have the spice. They'll have a little bit of heat, but it's really mild. I mean, especially when you're comparing it to a habanero. Beets are doing really well. Been harvesting lots of them. Still have a few more that need to grow. Um, carrots, harvesting tons of carrots. I have another little cucumber back here that I can pick. These are all Kirby cucumbers. Oh, here's another one. Could have gone a little longer, but it will. And here in this jungle, <laughs> we have zucchini. Now this zucchini I planted super late, but I've already harvested two zucchini off of it. And look how big it is. The blossoms. Love to cook these up. Love to fry these and stuff them with goat cheese. Mm. We're gonna be getting a bunch more zucchini, I just know it, so <laughs> I think this is just the beginning. Ah, my mystery squash. I finally think I know what my mystery squash is, and I think it's a butternut. Based on the shape, that's my guess. Um, it makes sense that I would have had butternut squash seeds in my compost, and uh, I'm really excited to harvest those, so hopefully they come full term. Um, this is just a straight up jungle back here and I don't want to move it around too much because this tomato plant is resting. And um, we've got some cantaloupe growing, some watermelon growing. Whether or not it's going to produce fruit, I have absolutely no idea, but only time will tell. Still have some celery in. I don't know why I haven't pulled it all out, what I'm really waiting for. Um, more peppers. These are Italian long hots. Um, these ones aren't doing quite as good, but some of them are. And this eggplant, look how big this eggplant is. I don't think I've ever had an eggplant plant get this large before. And it's just now starting to produce fruit. So you can see right here, it's our very first baby eggplant. And back here, I have some other eggplant. Wow, that one's actually almost ready to pick. Look at that, beautiful. Another beautiful eggplant coming in, great color. Got two more eggplants right here. They're a little bit smaller. They're actually a lot smaller. Ouch, and a little pinchy. And here is the newly formed patio garden. These are some sun gold tomatoes, which you guys probably know are my favorite. And they just started to ripen. And these should be coming in really quickly now. Um, and this is a sweet 100. First time growing these. So far, so good. Um, we've been dealing with a little bit of blight back here, but you know, nothing we can't manage. These are my potatoes, and this is, a, this is a big zebra plant, which is doing pretty well so far. Um, this got planted really late, so it's still on the smaller side, but I have high hopes. And none of the problems have been plaguing these so far. Um, this plant, I have some random carrots planted, and then some more potatoes that I'm not really sure what I'm even doing with, but we'll see. It's all an experiment. So there you have it, that's about it. Um, you know, I have a lot of really good things still going on in the garden. Uh, the tomatoes, however, I'm pretty upset about. So if you have any suggestions or ideas on what could possibly be happening, please let me know, because I am totally stumped. And it's sad, those are my babies. <laughs> that's why I started gardening in, in the first place was for tomatoes, because I love them so much. So when my tomatoes don't do well, I have a hard time feeling good about anything that's happening in the garden. Anyway, I'll probably catch you guys in another couple weeks, sometime in mid-August. Then I'll be back again in September, October, and probably even November to show you what I have going on. I really appreciate you tuning in and for all the comments that you guys leave me. I love hearing from you. I love hearing what you're growing in your garden. I love getting all of your tips and suggestions. This is a great community that we have. I'm so happy to be a part of it. So please keep enjoying the rest of your summer, and I'll see you next time.